Hello, and welcome to the fourth and final episode of Faith Journeys. Today, we're going to get to hear from Linda Buxa, who's been at Time of Grace longer than any of us. Now, if you've been a Little Things listener for any amount of time, you may have heard my interview with her last August when we talked about her book, Visible Faith. So you got a little bit of who she is. Today, you're going to hear some more about her very interesting life and what she's up to and what keeps her rooted and grounded in the Word of God. So enjoy this interview with Linda Buxa. Linda, good to see you again. Good morning. Good morning. You are the longest running blogger, I think, for Time of Grace, correct? Correct. It and dawned on me today, it is 10 years. That's what I was wondering. Yes. How did you get into blogging for Time of Grace? Pastor Jeske, the original Time of Grace speaker, he was the only Time of Grace voice at the time. Yeah. And around that time, they said, we need to get more voices. We'd love to have a female voice. And I had been a member of Pastor Jeske's church before Mm -hmm. I got married. And I had run an inner city ministry there. And then after I moved to Alaska, I sent him my Christmas cards. (laughs) And so when they said, who do you know that could write? He said, I love Christmas letters from Linda. I want her to be the writer. That's phenomenal. And that's how I got started. What a great story. (laughs) Isn't that awesome? Okay. So most of my listeners probably know who you are because you've done a lot of books, devotions, Mm -hmm. blogs. But for those who don't, tell us a little about yourself. I am married to Greg. We were in the Coast Guard. So I just sort of gave it away that we had lived in Alaska. Um, We technically saw each other seven times before we were married because we dated long distance. I was in Milwaukee and he was in Alaska and we started, we met over email through some friends. Anyway, so we started off our marriage living on an island in Alaska and we had three kids in three and a half years. We were also stationed in Washington, D.C., California, and then about 10 years ago, we retired from the Coast Guard and moved to Wisconsin. So my three kiddos are Abby. She's 21. She graduated from college and now lives in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, She loves it. Her job is fully remote. So her company is actually in Milwaukee and she lives in Nashville with some friends from college and loves life down there. Awesome. My middle one, Lydia, she is a forensic science major at Lynchburg, Virginia. It is so cool. Like... When they're toddlers, you never think you're going to get a text that says, I snuck into the cadaver lab or I worked a death scene investigation. So I'm thinking CSI. Is that is that honestly what it is or no? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she she wants to do more of the like work with bones, oh, it, almost bones. like the show Bones. <laughs> um, but she'll see where God takes her. Yeah. And my youngest is a boy, Ben. He is 18. He committed to going to the University of North Dakota. He's going to be a math major, but he's also going to play football there. Nice. Yes. Awesome. So. Congratulations, Ben. Thanks. I know. It's very <laughs> exciting. Last time we chatted, we were talking about visible faith. What's visible faith? This is a devotional journal. Time of Grace probably has a better word for it, but I call it a thingy, um, <laughs> where it's not really a book in the fact that you can sit down and read it. It is an interactive discussion. I'm a facilitator going over the fruit of the Spirit. Very good. That's kind of a churchy word, but the Bible tells us that when you have faith, how you live it out in your life is will reflect in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. I never remember all nine of them without reading the passage. But it is just a nine-week journal walking you through studying all the things that the Holy Spirit works inside of you. And that book did very well. What do you think it was about that book that resonated with people? Why did they gravitate towards that? Other than you being the author, of course. (laughs) As we laugh. I have no, zero okay. idea. No, it's just, it's funny because some of the Time of Grace friends I have here, they were saying, this book did amazing. And I was like, what? What does amazing mean? I had no idea that it was doing so well. Yeah. 
flippantly, I'll probably say it's because I have friends that live all over the country and I'm fairly active on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, maybe I bribed them all to buy it. Um, a friend of mine did buy 25 copies and hosted a luncheon for a group of women and invited me to come speak about it. Yeah. So, you know, we'll pad the numbers that way. Um, part of it, though, I think people want interactive material. We put out a lot of things. I write a lot of blogs, a lot of devotions, yeah. and I'm just feeding people. Yeah. And maybe they read it, but to think about it, to apply it, to be active, I think that makes the difference, is yeah. that people want to have this relationship almost yeah. with the writer, with their God. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of just being fed, this is a relationship. And how can we build that relationship? Yeah. I think that's what may have done it. I think, too, another thing that was really nice about it is that it was a daily walk. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't huge, long things to do, you know, like to sit down. But it was like a, a short little chunk to do every day. Right. Which made it doable. You cool. know, it didn't feel overwhelming. It felt Ah, I can do this. Yes. So I also, I think because I am not a rigid person, I'm like, whatever you want to do. Yeah. I have a friend who said, do you think it would work for my women's Bible study? And they only meet once a month. So instead oh, wow. of doing it daily, they have them do the topic, you know, so uh. love. And those women are supposed to work through love in that month. And then mm -hmm. they come. And I said, it's almost like a book club. Like after nice. that, they can come and discuss it. And I've actually heard from a couple of people that that's what they're doing too. Nice. So it's adaptable yeah. where you can do it on your own, but you can also encourage each other and yeah. talk with each other about it. Mm, I love that. So how do you come up with your ideas for devotions, blogs? That is all God. <laughs> I mean, obviously, right? Yeah. But he has given me... What I realize, I thought everybody could do this, but a unique ability to make analogies. Mm -hmm. I think some people are better at doctrine, right? Yeah. I have the blessing of being able to see an analogy and then I take what I know from the Bible and compare it to what I see in my world. Mm -hmm. um, one blessing is that I went to Christian grade schools and high school and college, <laughs> and I work for a bunch of Christian places, but I've memorized so many parts of the Bible. So that's just all in here. When we talk about hiding God's word in your heart, mm -hmm. you know, God's word is just already part of my heart and my brain. And so when I see something, I go, oh, there's this passage. Nice. And it just came to me the other day. And maybe this is just a way of explaining it. Yeah. That might make a little more sense. We were making a recipe from scratch and my daughter and I, we had looked at it and we said, oh, do not use, do not triple the amount of brown sugar. Like that'll be way too sweet. And so after dinner, she said, how much did you use? And I said, oh, I used brown sugar and I just poured it in. I didn't press it down, you know, and I just used a little bit. <laughs> a good measure pressed down. <laughs> yes. That next yeah. day, one of my Bible readings was a good measure, pressed down, shaken, overflowing. Yeah. And I will send, I was like, oh, that brown sugar analogy yeah. is my, you know, what's the difference between God's blessing in your life? Does he just pour it in or does he pour it, press it, shake it, pour some more, press some more? And I was like, there we go. That's a devotion. Okay. So don't you think too, though, that's how God speaks to us so often? Because we're in his word. Mm -hmm. You know, you were in his word. You were going to his word. But right. last night I stayed with a friend. And we were talking about prayer. And I brought up, well, think about King Asa. You know how he, every time he went out to meet the troops or out to meet enemy forces, he prayed and God gave him victory. Yeah. But then he has a foot sore, foot disease, and he never goes to God. Mm -hmm. So this morning, get up, we're having coffee together. And she's like, guess what my morning Bible reading was? King Asa. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that when I was talking to her. Right. You know, God did. But that was just, again... God sort of going like, yeah, I'm here. I'm in this. You yeah. know what I mean? But you recognize that. Mm -hmm. And you like to 
bring that out in your devotions, your blogs. Right. Like, hey, guys, here's a connection I see. Yes. Which is neat. And I try and do, I will, now that my kids are moving out, I don't get to do it as often anymore. But we would be driving. And when I was writing my initial children, family devotion yeah. book, and I had been given two to three months to do 365 devotions. Oh, wow. And I'm like, okay, we need ideas. <laughs> so we'd be driving in the car. And I was like, guys, help me find a devotion. Like, what do you think when you see that? merging sign or what do you think when you see a road close sign or what about this you know blue sky is there a bible passage that goes along with it like to me you can do your bible reading in the morning yeah but it's how do you see god throughout the day i love that and that's where it's like if you see him in everything you do yeah that's where the devotions come for me Mm, love that So your faith journey probably looks a lot different than it did 10 years ago. What is one thing that you did well that has kept you rooted in the word? I do morning Bible readings. And you do very early morning Bible readings. Am I correct? Yes. Like between 4.30 and 5.30 in the morning. And why then? Uh, Because I just wake up. Mm -hmm. I'm just an early riser and I wake up and the house is quiet. Yeah. I find that if I try and do my devotion when everyone else is awake, all of a sudden I'm on duty as a wife or mom. And I'm always thinking, oh, do they need something? Or am I supposed to, like once they're awake, the day has started and it's time Mm -hmm. to get ready for work. It's time to, you know, whatever, go open up the chickens and feed the dog. (laughs) And so that quiet time is just my time where I actually focus. Otherwise, I'm super distracted. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. I sometimes forget that you're the chicken lady. Oh, I'm totally the How chicken lady. How many chickens lady. do you have? Well, we only have, I think we're down to 11 right now. Oh, yeah. We've been up to 30 at some point. Be careful. We sh- we probably shouldn't say this. Like, eggs are a huge commodity right now. They're eggs. like, are you are you guarding your chickens? Um <laughs> I am sharing every meme that talks about how the crazy chicken lady is now your best friend. Ah, nice. Very yeah. good. So for those people who don't know, you often post on social media because you own chickens and you have a lot of little crazy stories about your chickens and gathering eggs and going out and feeding chickens or what have you, which is why I referred to you as the chicken lady. Yes, absolutely. When we moved to Wisconsin, my husband said, I kind of want a hobby Mm farm-ish. So we have a man who comes and puts beehives on our property. We own chickens. We have farm cats. We have a dog. It's a little bit of mayhem and chaos. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But right now, having chickens is the best thing in the world. Gold. So what about your faith walk do you wish that you had learned earlier in life? Or what would you do differently if you had a chance? Mm -hmm. I think I would not be quite a people pleaser. Uh. Um, I I want everyone to feel loved. I empathy is you know if you've done Strengths Finder, mm-hmm. empathy is one of my top five. Yeah, I'm not even close to into oh. empathy at all, but I'm See? good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but empathy is a burden because I can always see something from somebody else's point of view. Yeah. So everything I've ever done in my life of faith is always, but I could understand how somebody else might feel differently. And, and I didn't want anybody to be hurt or offended. And finally I had to just realize that my faith walk, Mm -hmm. how I read the Bible, pray, support my friends, some people will absolutely disapprove. And they're Christians who can absolutely disapprove. Right. And I am not here to make them happy. Mm-hmm. And I'm uncomfortable saying it, right? even as I say it now. But I just realized sometimes the callings God has put on my heart, yeah. where how I think he's asking me to serve in a specific time or place might offend somebody. They might disagree with me. And I've had to come a long way in realizing that would be okay. You know, that was one of my big takeaways from Visible Faith. Mm. The kindness chapter, Mm. explaining the difference between nice and kind. When you're nice, you say things that people want to hear. 
But being kind is being truthful, even if it's not nice. Correct. And saying what is the truth and what people maybe need to hear, not what they want to hear. So you actually are the one who taught me that. And it was it was a great takeaway from that book. Oh, my goodness. Your last child is graduating and moving. So are you a planner or do you kind of wait and see how things Mm. are going to go? Like, are you planning what your life is going to look like next year? Or are you just like, "Eh, I'm just living today? I say I am like a cork in the ocean. Like, I'm just bobbing along and wherever God takes me. Because did I ever think that when I was living in Wisconsin that I was going to meet this Coast Guard officer who lived in Alaska? No. So I was like, okay, God, we'll go here. And then every time you get orders, you go someplace else. So I'm like, oh, great. The Washington, D.C. area, California, whatever works. It's great. Yeah. Um. But I am strategic about once we have a plan, I will take care of all the details. Okay. So I'm going to see what God has in store for us. Yeah. But I'm married to a planner. So while when we first got married on a bulletin board, he had typed out one year, five year, 10 year. Wow. Physical, spiritual, financial goals. And I was like, you what? <laughs> like, that is not me at all. Yeah. So I think God has gifted me a tether. Mm-hmm. Somebody who plans for me, wants those details worked out. And I'm like, let's just see what God has in store. Isn't that the way it always goes, though? Because yes. you marry someone who hopefully compliments you. Yes. And so you're not typically super identical. Whoops. Right. But you, you know, yeah, kind of compliment each other and what have you. But don't you spend a lot of time at the kids where the kids went to high school? I do. So, that- well, I will go back and say one thing I know for sure is because my son will be playing football yeah. for North Dakota, um, we will be spending a lot of time weekends on the road to yeah. go watch the games. So that's already in the works. Awesome. Um, and then we'll go visit the other kids, too. But yes, I work at my kids' high school. Mm -hmm. I work in their publications department, do their magazine, social media. I also sub in the classroom. Yeah. And I will continue doing that. Okay. People have asked, are you leaving when your last kid's out? And I love high schoolers. Okay. Uh, I've had so many people go, I can't even imagine how you sub in the classroom. And I'm like, if you realize that high schoolers are hilarious, smart, they are nervous, anxious, they are worried about how they fit in, they say stupid things, they are us. (laughs) They're just younger, right? And so if you just love these kids, and sometimes want to throw them out the window. I get that. Yeah. Right? Like, right. it's a challenging age. But they are such cool people. Yeah. And right now, I think it's harder for high schoolers than ever. Mm-hmm. So I have the privilege of loving these kids. And and can I love them all? No. But there are just some kids that I think are amazing and I get to spend time with them, so I wouldn't give that up either. Now, do you think, have, have your, like, loving this age, has that yeah. changed as your kids have gotten older? Because I know, you know, I started teaching preschoolers when my daughter, mm-hmm. my oldest, was in preschool. And I couldn't have imagined teaching, you know, anybody older. And as my kids have gravitated <laughs> towards the older age, well, yeah. as they've gotten older, not gravitated, <laughs> I've gravitated. Yes. And I enjoy, but that's because that's where my kids are and have right. been. So do you think that has anything to do with it, or did you always like the high school? Age. Oh, it absolutely does. Um, so when my kids were in preschool and grade school, I was a pre-K aide and there you go. I subbed in fourth grade. There are definitely ages I prefer. Yeah. Like fourth graders are awesome because they're not too cool yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yet they can hold a little bit better conversation. Mm-hmm. But I love toddlers where you can just be silly. So I think I have grown to appreciate every age as my kids have gotten older and it's a fun thing. And, and part of the reason I did it is I was a stay at home mom. Yeah. And I always ask people, do you work for pay? Cause if you stay at home with your children, you work, it is just not for pay. 
So I would always take jobs that fit into my family's life. Yeah. And I just, a friend of mine just had a baby and she's like, I don't want people to, I, I, I wish people would stop telling me to enjoy every moment. I'm like, oh, you do not enjoy every moment. <laughs> like, it is hard sometimes and you're like, I cannot wait till they are no longer three. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, right before they move off to college, you're like, yeah, it's time. Yeah. You're you're supposed to live on your own now. I've noticed that too. That's mm-hmm. God. I think that's just God's way of preparing us for I the separation too. that comes, yeah. you know realizing yeah, it's probably a good thing. Exactly. So are you working on another book? Nope. Oh. <laughs> ah. Okay, so here's the thing. Did I not say I'm like a cork in the ocean? Yes. I do not have goals. I do not have big dreams. I do not have these amazing aspirations. I look at people who are like, I can't wait to tackle the world. And I'm like, I don't know. Well, so the only yeah. time I write a book is when Time of Grace asks me nice. to write a book. And if it fits into my schedule or if it's something where, yep, like I'm a gut decision maker. Yeah. I am not a here's the pros, here's the cons. Does it make logical sense? If someone says, do you want to do this? I'll be like, Yep, that's it. That That's what happened with Visible Faith. I had turned down something that Time of Grace asked me to do because I was like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. So the next time they reach out and they're like, we have a book idea. There you go. If the time is there, I will do it. But nice. Very sorry. That was probably not the answer you wanted, but <laughs> no. I, have, I have zero career aspirations. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so if you could describe your faith journey in one word, what would it be? Mm. I do not love one word questions. Uh, okay, cuz I always have a 10 or last. No, but quirky. Faith journey quirky. My faith Explain. journey is quirky. Um because one, I think everybody's quirky. And so just embrace it. But I was raised in the church. Yeah. I am like a churchy person. Yep. I served in all sorts of ministries, you know, I said I worked at my home church running mm-hmm. an after school ministry. I sang in a Christian contemporary group in my 20s. I've always been in Bible studies. I've always been active in our church. And yet, I had a pastor recently say, You're a little rebellious. And I was like, I kind of am. Oh my. Like, That's funny. You know, back when Christian Contemporary was maybe a little, Mm -hmm. we we didn't talk about that, you know, or that was out there. I was doing that. And I'm rarely content to just do as you were told. And so I'm always, I've always just felt a little out there, Mm -hmm. a little weird, a little unique. Mm -hmm. I had another pastor tell me one day, he goes, you're really a prophetess. And I was like, are we allowed to say that? <laughs> Back up, everyone. Lightning's coming. I know. And, and he's like, not that you're foretelling the future. But he said, you handle the word of God. Mm. And it actually brought tears to my eyes because I was like, wow, what a privilege. Right. But that's quirky. Not everybody gets to do that. Not right. everybody has that calling from God. And they shouldn't. Not everybody should. Right. We all have different gifts. Right. So we asked you to bring a blog along, Mm -hmm. something that um, maybe was meaningful to you, one of your favorite blogs. What did you choose? I chose the one called To the Mamas Who Take Their Squirrely Kids to Church. Awesome. Could you read it for us, please? I can. Um, And this one, boy, This is probably eight or nine years old, maybe. It's an old one, Mm -hmm. but I see it still occasionally getting shared, so I think it's a popular one. Dear Mamas of Little Ones, I sat behind you in church this week. I saw you struggle with holding two kiddos because the one in your arms wasn't happy when another one wanted to join in. I saw your son completely messing up your hair. I saw you and your husband hand the toddler, who had a cold, of course, back and forth because he couldn't decide which lap he liked best. I saw the look on your face as you jumped up to get the son who crawled under the pew and ended up behind you. I saw you switch spots with other kids to stand next to the one who was being a stinker. 
the one who thought you actually didn't see him. Yay for eyes in the back and side of your head. I saw you leave for what you thought were endless bathroom and water breaks. I saw your daughter stick her fingers in her ears and loudly proclaim, I don't like this song. I love that. And these all happened on one Sunday. Let me just. I saw the desperation on your face when church went a bit longer than usual because you were on borrowed time. My kids saw it too. My 11 year old daughter, she's now 21, leaned over and asked, Do you miss that? I smiled and said, Sometimes. And I think by sometimes I meant not really. It wasn't that long ago that I was you. My son got so many lollipops each service that he might as well have had an IV. It's seriously. I did it because after every song, he would loudly ask, Don? Because he was ready to go home. He knew that church ended with a hymn. And so every time we sang amen, he thought, First him done. Anyway, that's an aside. That wasn't in the blog. My mom bag was packed with dolls and books and snacks. My hair and clothes were disheveled. Now I'm in the stage where we sit together without shuffling positions. My kids sing along and we talk about the message on the way home. I'm at the stage where I see each of my kiddos blossoming an independent relationship with Jesus, one that is becoming theirs, not mine or my husband's. I tell you this, not to brag, but just to encourage you to hang in there. Sometimes worship feels five hours long, Mm -hmm. but I promise that in five years, it will feel like you blinked. You will look next to you and see kiddos who got themselves dressed and who can make it through without crayons. As my children and I watched you and smiled, because we thought your kids were adorable, uh, something else dawned on me. God saw you, mamas, and he was smiling too. He loves the sacrifice you make to get his children to his house. He loves that you sacrifice what would mean more free time, Mm -hmm. less hassle, less exhaustion to keep meeting with the people who encourage you. He is your faithful father, and he could not be more proud of you. I know there are moments when you get in the car feeling like everything went wrong that day. There is grace for you. Jesus a 12-year-old who went to his father's house even without his parents, paid for the days you lost your patience and your kids were obstinate. Obstinate. Thanks to Jesus, God simply sees you as his righteous, holy child who is taking care of his other righteous, holy children. Soon enough, you will be sitting behind parents with little ones wondering where the time went. You'll look over at the kiddo who is taller than you. They are all taller than me now. (laughs) And thank God that he was faithful when the kids were little and that he is faithful right now. Then you'll pray because you're about to enter the high school years or leave the high school years now and trust he'll be faithful then too. After church, you'll walk up to the new batch of young moms and encourage them because you've been there. Ah, that's beautiful. Thanks. I'm going to wipe a little tear (laughs) out of the corner of my eye. It's so true, though. Mm-hmm. And we all needed that encouragement at one point. Yeah. Still do. <laughs> and I will say, like, with kids out of the house, one of my other blogs that wasn't as popular and got me in a little bit of hot water from people talked about helping your kids develop their own faith. Yeah. And and I see it now. As my kids move out, I tell them, you know, when you're at our house, you have to wake up and go to church with us. That's just a given. But when you move out, you not only decide if but where you will go to church. Right. And we've had those talks. And so I I could probably do a part two about just what a joy it is when I hear my daughter call me up and she's like, yep, I'm having my church group over or our church welcomes college age and young adults and they host us for Thanksgiving when she couldn't come home for Thanksgiving. Or the things my daughter is praying about, you know, where one of our church... Depending on the church I'm in, I'm a hand raiser, you know, during songs. And my daughter called me up one day and she's like, I'm becoming a hand raiser mom. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> and for those moms out there who maybe have young adults and they're not seeing that mm-hmm. their children maybe aren't waking up at college to go to church, right. hang on. Yeah. It's not over yet. These right. ages, just keep praying, mamas, and yeah. uh, holding on. And 
Yeah, because everybody goes through my other faith journey. Could have been roller coaster. Yeah. You know, that could have been my one word where you have highs, you have lows, you have times where you think, God, I'm doing what you asked me to do and things still didn't work out. Right. And I'm still sometimes probably a little disappointed. Yeah. You know, that what I thought were his good plans did not become my good plans. Right. And yeah, I don't know why God doesn't keep answering prayers the way I think he should. For some reason, he just <laughs> keeps answering them the way that's best. Right? <laughs> right. Well, thank you for being here, Linda. We always enjoy having you. Thank you. This has been fun. Good.